So? So? So. So. So and so. You know who you're talking about? Yeah. Will you introduce yourself as Morris Shedd? <laughs> Morris Shedd? Yeah. Why? I know, when I ask you, okay. Hi, I'm Malcolm Dirty. And I'm Morris Shedd. Together, we're Dirty Shed Creations. Who's, is it Cynthia Creation? No, it's Juniper Creation. Juniper. So, the three of us are Dirty Shed Creations. Are you, what are you again? Morris? Morris, Morris Shedd. Morris Shedd. And I'm Malcolm Dirty. Malcolm Dirty. <laughs> Just a bit of silliness or for you there. Dirty the Malcolm. And dirty Malcolm. Oh, and I gave him a Dirty Malcolm. Ooh. <laughs> Say what? So, it's Friday afternoon. Friday afternoon. We thought we'd uh, celebrate the weekend by sharing some of our favourite makers and people who are inspiring us on the YouTube platform. Good. Good yeah. use of words. Like it. Keep I, that I, bit in. Yeah, I almost Keep managed to say in. it without stuttering or faltering at all. You know, we don't script these things, but I think you guys already know that. Like, just two bumbling fools ranting on because they've got nothing better to do with their useless lives. Um, anyway. Yeah, we're going to do um, what was uh, <laughs> Potwood Playback. So, some well, of you guys might actually have found us through Potwood Playback. Wood. Uh, I always like to think that Dirty Shed was on the runway before that, and Popwood Playback was the actual takeoff, and we yeah. were a Thomas Cook holiday, flying into misery. Ooh, how very <laughs> yeah. contemporary. Um, yeah, uh, just a pair of stable geniuses, which is my thing at the moment. He dubbed himself an extremely stable genius. The stable genius has once again reared his head. I'm an extremely stable genius. So essentially, yeah, what, uh, for those of you that don't know, Popwood Playback was basically kind of an opportunity for people to guest present on the Popwood channel. Popular woodworking. Popular woodworking channel. And just kind of like, I suppose, share makers um, and creators out there. I suppose like a magazine kind of thing, really. Just, yeah. you know, who's out there, what are they doing? So, yeah, we're going to be choosing an eclectic array of maker content. So you'll have those guys that are probably quite well established. You'll have those that are really niche. You'll have those that are just starting out and, yeah people that we've just stumbled across or possibly yeah. even people that we've met and done stuff with. Yeah, absolutely. So, yeah, who should we start off with? Well, I've got to say, there's one guy out there at the moment and I absolutely love everything that he is doing. Yuri Tuckman. So I bought this Kiridashi knife, Japanese carving knife or veneer, what have you. Anyway, this I bought a couple of months ago and it's absolutely became one of my favorite tools in the shop. And it, it's quite strange, isn't it, that just a simple knife can transform so much of my work. As opposed to this, this is a Kirschen, also carving knife. I guess it's supposed to do similar things, I suppose. Uh, they cost about the same and it is absolutely not as nice. I don't know a lot about him. Um, I'd love to know where he's from. I've tried to find out. I think he's based, well, he's, he's, he's based in Europe or somewhere like Israel or something like that. But he's got a sense of humour. He's such a talented kind of chap. One thing that I had noticed is that I accidentally bought a left hand knife. Where we use a lot of kind of machines and tools, everything Yuri does is with like hand tools or tools for that matter that he's made himself and little machines that he's made himself and silly little gadgets that he makes. And what does he make? I mean, one, one of my favorites is he makes a pair of like reverse cutting scissors. Um, so there's no way to operate these scissors without chopping your fingers off. And it, it, it's just kind of ridiculous stuff like that. There's a whale, a whale shaped engraving hammer. There's a, there's a plane that works in both directions, you know, so a wood plane that essentially works in both directions, which, may, which, which renders it completely useless. Really surprised how well this works. I mean, as uh, stupid of an idea this is and as nightmarishly difficult it is to tune up, it does work after you get it right and uh, it works pretty darn well. I, I, uh, this will definitely see some use, I believe, uh, you know, for chamfers, all sorts of, you know, breaking corners. 
Um, it, it's just it's it's so it's, it's got just a real crazy little crazy one-off. little kind of like I don't know like those Victorian oddities or whatever you'd call them. I mean, he's a, he's an incredible painter as well. So I think he might have a background in jewellery. He makes all his own tools. Um, he works probably out of his living room. Yet he's making these incredible things. You know, he ages things. Just just get tucked into some of his stuff. It's absolutely brilliant. It's just great content. His projects are always fantastic. And there's a, an underlying quite uh, left field sense of humour. Let's call it that. Brilliant. Please check him out. He's well worth looking into. One of the reasons why we're doing this is the Popwood thing that we explained, but also because a lot of our um, positives for our channel have always come from getting involved with external makers and collaborating with people. And one of those is Scott Turner. So Scott Turner, Scott yeah. Scott Turner previewed some uh, butterfly ties that Al made yeah, for him. Yeah, in his and recent he, film. Yeah, built them into a clock. Um, yeah. That's his latest project. Yeah, latest one. But there's also one on there that I've watched, which is that um, 42 draw. Oh, you know. Yeah. yeah, I love that. But here's the cabinet, the finished product. It's really funny, actually, because I think fundamentally the stuff Scott Turner does, I, I don't know how he's managed to do it. It's almost like he's got into my head before even. Some of the stuff that he's making, we are going to make our own versions of. We're not wanting to rip him off in any respect. It's really funny. He, he made that unit. Um, like a garage organizer or a tool organizing unit that can be used as a workbench. I've been wanting to make one of those for I don't know 10 years now. They're, they're very restrictive to buy, they're very expensive to buy. Um, it will be something we'll be returning to. But again, Scott. Maybe for the new shed? Yeah, absolutely for the new shed because wow. it's going to. I'd like to kind of just tidy things up though. I think what we might end up doing is a big, we'll probably do a Dirty Shed Creations car boot sale ourselves um, and we'll probably try and move on or we'll auction or we'll do something, move on a load of crap and just have a more streamlined kind of workshop out there. So it won't be the dirty shed, it'll be the it's tidy shed. Uh, yeah, but I think that's from a just a health perspective, you know, yeah. sitting and mushrooms growing out of the ceiling, etc. I'm not going to repeat myself. Yeah, let's not go yeah. there again. But so, yeah, um, Scott Turner, brilliant. Nice one. Yeah, and a, a really uh, respected and uh, appreciated uh, subscriber and uh, friend. 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 friend, friend of the channel. Friend, friend, oh, friend. Oh, friend. please, my friend. Oh, oh, friend. friend. Oh, friend. Oh, friend. Fuck you, lot. Where's the beer? So the next one would be, I'm gonna go Black Bear Forge because Al's been on about Black Bear Forge for quite a while, and I have only recently had a little look at him. I thought today we might do something a little bit out of the ordinary. At least it's out of the ordinary compared to what I typically do in the shop. Welcome back to Black Bear Forge. I know that Al loves him and he has been following how he works and trying to replicate. Is that yeah, fair enough? You know, absolutely. It's Again, it's like I really enjoy. So I was in the forge the other day and I was we were making the welly stand, which we'll maybe show a photo of. Yeah, you need to take uh, a photo and send it to Yeah, you. we were making the welly stand and as I was forging, the way I was forging the metal and the way I was, I could see, I think um, I could see John, isn't it? I could see John from Black Bear Forge in my head, and I was like replicating for for a brief moment. I was John, and I was yeah, I was kind of like, and it was it was bizarre because I could see. So I've watched so many of his films now, probably ninety percent of everything on his channel. He tends to do it the long hard way. He's got his power hammers and his treadle hammers and all of those things, but he tends to do these small projects, which is where I am in blacksmithing, and he does them all the old-fashioned way. And he's quite a character as well. Very, yeah. very informative teacher. But I don't want that thick for the, the hanging hook. So I'm gonna go back under the power hammer. I'll leave to about here so it fits inside the neck of the bottle. Then draw this out into something we'll later make the uh, hook to hang it from out of. His um, intro film, so the first film you watch if you go to his channel and you're not subscribed and you watch it, it's almost like the perfect pastiche of making uh, a channel in um, what I would say a lo-fi way. Good morning. Good morning. It, it, some of the shots and the editing are so good because they are so like 
amateur, yeah. but it's yeah. not amateur. Like his content is getting better and better. Yeah. And again, he's one of these makers who is a maker and is ultimately really talented at doing that, but who's also making the films himself as well. I have had this cut off piece of an oxygen cylinder laying around for years. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, like the guys that do that, I mean, we're a partnership. Yeah. Al does the making, I do the filming and the editing. And it's hard enough doing it that way without yeah, having I mean, to do everything. Yeah, I mean, two people. Imagine doing all that on yourself. I mean, like, yeah. your Scots and all those type of yeah. people who... Yeah. Pask Makes is another one who's really good at doing that, filming his own stuff. Yeah. But um, John's stuff is really good. He's so knowledgeable. And what I wanted to do is talk to you about the film he made, which is where he makes a wheat twist. It's been a little while since we've looked at twist patterns or other ways that you can twist a bar besides just taking a square bar and twisting it up in the vise. Oh, uh, no, you know what? Funnily enough, that is one that I haven't watched. Um, ah. Probably because it feels at this point maybe like it's just a touch beyond. Well, that's, part of it is what he's saying in there is techniques for welding together using some flux and doing it in... He uses coal forge, doesn't he? Yeah, yes, yes, yes. But could, using the welds and using well, flux on a propane no, forge, could you no, do it? No, we couldn't because our forge doesn't get that hot. I'm fairly... You know what? I've never tried to forge weld. and um, Well, he says that that is a skill that if you're a blacksmith, then you should be undertaking in your first year of blacksmithing. Oh, so there's I'm a challenge two, for you. Two years in now, so um. So how so would you do that then with a propane forge? How would you weld? Well, I mean, because be the fair, idea is is that you got two sets of bar that you then weld yeah. at each end and then you twist opposite ways and okay. then it creates a wheat look what looks like a sheaf of wheat. Okay, well I'll 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 visit that. Um, I'll visit that oh, and a we'll, challenge. we'll challenge you. Yeah, I mean that's uh, you know uh, we're not gonna. Our next film isn't going to be that happening. But, no, you know, it'd be worth we'll, investing. Yeah, we'll, we'll, I would like to forge weld. I mean, you know, if you want to talk about forge welders, let's talk about. Um, oh God, is it Lyle? Oh my word! Some of the stuff that he's doing. I mean, look at this. I mean, these horses, his sculptures oh, that yeah, he's doing. Yeah. But that, I mean, he is just like for me. He is a master of forge welding. Those things that he makes, the stag. Oh my god, they're beautiful, but all the elements are hand forged and then forge welded. Yeah. And I mean, Christ, he takes it to another level. I mean, you know. Is he using coal forge as well? Yeah, he? he's using a coal forge. But you see, most people like um, like John at uh, Black Bear Forge as well, they'll have a propane forge because if you're doing something really quick or a small item, you know, it's easier with a, a propane forge. I mean, something that I've been doing of late that I never used to do, I used to run my forge at really low pressure. And when we were heating up our um, skull coasters, I did turn the pressure right up. And actually it did manage, well, you saw the process of those um, coasters starting to stick together. So maybe our forge will get that hot. Yeah, it'd be worth investigating. Absolutely. It, he says that being able to uh, forge weld opens up many more doors including exactly. uh, knives yeah 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 knives all that type yeah. of stuff so that would be something that we're going to take from these yeah, 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 yeah. amazing I mean, makers and we're going to start applying it to what we're doing and every day's a school day yeah yeah this piece has to be face up on the anvil and this piece has to hold it in place while i drop the tongs pick up my hammer and make the weld so there's a little coordination involved, and the more you practice it without welding, the more likely you are to get it. It's also better to practice it on things that don't matter before you try and do something that's important to you. We're so lucky with YouTube because someone like him who's sharing all these skills that, you know, unless you knew a blacksmith and then unless you for, you know forged a friendship with a blacksmith, I mean, to use it, or did you like that? Um, unless, you know, you struck it off with a blacksmith, you know, who was willing to let you into their shop. You know, he lets you in his shop every week while he's making something crazy or magnificent. Brilliant, brilliant what? stuff. When you think of his channel, what um, project springs to mind then with him? Uh, I mean, he did a dragon door knocker. This is that same little ball punch that we started this hole with. He does a hook of the week, which he makes out of scrap, which I think is a fantastic way to go about things. I'm going to put a little bit of a mark in for a mouth. Now you could kind of highlight around the nose, because the nose is usually pretty distinct on a, an animal. 
I'm a bit of a kind of magpie now. I go round and I was on a building site the other day and there was one of those uh, bits of rebar that someone had just chucked to one side, zoink, in the back of the van. That'll get forged into something. Um, you know, that's one of the joys of blacksmithing, that you can find a chunk of something, you know, in the ground, if you like. And, you know, you can throw it in the forge and bang, away you go, have a go. Yeah. Um, you, you know... It's almost like Scrap Wood Challenge that uh, Pask makes does. Yeah, yeah. Scrap Wood Challenge, Scrap Wood Challenge. It's Scrap, it's Scrap, it's Firewood, but some of the wood is good. What, should we talk about um, one of the smaller creators who's actually a fan of ours? Well, can I... I'm just going to, just as a final word with uh, Black Bear Forge, and I mean... I'm going to say this, and I, pr I probably shouldn't, but when I first started watching his stuff, I was like... Who the hell is this guy? Is anyone going to pick up on this? And you know what? I love his channel now. He is the nicest, most genuine. He's a through and through teacher. The way he kind of is the patience of a saint. I think he said he was an ex-fireman or something yeah, like that. Yeah, I think he um, was an ex-fireman and now he's gone into this and... Oh, he is so knowledgeable about yeah. he's uh, taken everything and he's self-taught as well, I think. Is he? he? Yeah, I think oh, well, he good. said that. Yeah. It's so I mean, amazing. that's, you know, blacksmithing, which is something that I'm... You know, we're having forays into it. You know, it is. It, it, it's. I don't know of another way. You can go and pay to go on courses. I always think with things like that. If you're going to pay to go on a course, have a go. Get yourself a propane plumber's torch. Heat up a piece of steel the old-fashioned way. Hit it with a hammer. See how you go. You can pay all the money in the world to go on these courses, and you might find that after like an hour, you're like, oh my god, what the hell am I doing here? You're three hundred quid down. 60 quid, get yourself some propane, build yourself a forge out of scrap. It might cost you 100 quid. You're still 200 quid up on the course that you've just paid to go and do. Have a go. See. Or, of course, if there is a blacksmith around there, get yourself in there and see if you like it. A lot of people aren't going to enjoy it. You know, they, 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 I'll sit and watch videos all day long, but picking up a bloody great £3 hammer, £4 hammer and sitting and doing this... It's a, you know, it's a, it's a, a lot of people just will not get on with that. Um, my background is in construction and building and all of these things, as well as engineering in a previous life. So, you know, I'm quite good at hitting a nail on the head with a hammer. You can't teach that to someone who's come out of an office. You can't teach them that manual dexterity and that hand-eye coordination. You have to have that. Some people just do not have that. Blacksmithing is all about exactly that and applying it. So, you know, have a go, see what you think. Cool. So should we do a little maker? Yeah, let's let's visit some let's of these little who's guys. One of our um well, he's long time supporter. Yeah, long time supporter. Long time and, commenter uh, as well. Commenter uh, and, Sparky yeah. four one five, everything's adjust adjustable. Yeah. Is his uh, handle yeah. and his channel and yeah. Um he's got a bit of a uh, punisher. Uh, fetish, is fetish? Is it, is, yeah. is it fair to call it a fetish? fetish? Yeah. yeah. It's a bit sexual, isn't yeah. it? But um, well, he likes the Punisher, which isn't dissimilar to our school. No, really. in a manner of speaking, not. Yeah, I mean, I, I really enjoyed his casting videos. He's he's not approaching it from a kind of, um, I've got all the tools in the world, I can do anything. He makes things much more from a kind of pragmatic, appro uh, pragmatic standpoint, if you like, where it's kind of make do... Um, yeah, get in the shed and make something. Yeah, exactly, that kind exactly of Exactly like, what know. you were just saying about... Get a piece of metal, heat it up, bash it, see yeah, what you yeah, like yeah. bashing it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, you might it's not. It's good. Yeah. But some great content. Uh, yeah, he's, he's, he's way ahead of us on some stuff. Like the casting is something that I want to return to or I'd like us to go into, but it won't be for a while. Yeah. But that's it, isn't it? You know, it's a world out there. There's all these things to have a go out and do. Yeah. So, yeah, if you have uh, looking for some more maker content, definitely check out Sparky. Uh, mm -hmm. He's quite consistent as well. He gets some stuff out regular yeah. and, um, that's yeah, it. help him out. Help Leave him a account. comment, say hello, build a relationship. Yeah. He's, he likes a double entendre as he well. He does, doesn't he? Yeah, yeah, he comments on a lot of... He pulls us up on a lot of stuff, actually, yeah. doesn't he? Yeah. yeah. Very active kind of uh, member of the Schedulencia. Uh, <laughs> I'm enjoying that work. Yeah, but I wonder what he looks like. I don't know. Do you think he might show think... his face like in one of his films? Because you, you just get hands. Yeah. So I it, think that's the the thing with the um, mystery of the mystery with maker content because you're having to make it and film it quite often yeah. and do everything putting yourself in it is always 
a little bit of a problem because you, you, you're not used to it. You don't want to do it when you're starting out. But I think if you just start doing it, you become more familiar with it. Because when we started, Al said that he didn't want to be in the films. Well, I was. I said to you in the, on the back of um, uh, someone else we follow, which I'm not going to go into now because I think we'll save him for a little bit later on. But yeah, he doesn't speak at all. Yeah. So you just see him making what he makes. and then. But then he, what I hadn't realised at the time is he then... He does two edits, so he does an edit for YouTube and then an edit for Patreon where he's actually talking and describing exactly what he's doing. Ah, oh, right, so, okay. Um, so you kind of have a level of access, if you like. If you if you contribute and you make a donation, then you get the, the vocals, which the is quite VO. clever. But, you know, we'll it visit is. that because he doesn't... The stuff he makes, if you watch enough of it, um, yeah, you'll learn. I'm not going to go into him now because I'd like to save him. For yeah, it. but I, I think just introducing your projects or maybe breaking off at a certain point if something doesn't work and talking about what happened and yeah. how you're going to fix it, it's a good thing to start dropping in there. And, um, yeah. yeah, keep so, going, Sparky. It's all good. Yeah. We're supporting you. We're watching. Hopefully someone else will come and support you off the back of seeing this as well. Yeah. But they probably won't. No. You'll be lucky to get three views in this. Yeah. <laughs> Hi, my name's John. Welcome to another cooking video. Once again, I'm going to be cooking a spam sandwich, but this time a little bit different. I'm going to slice it the same way, and I'm going to make a foam tool to form the spam into a, a receptacle, really, for an egg. I used to live up in Newcastle, up in the northeast of England, and... Um, I absolutely, I can listen to the Geordie accent and the Mackam accent all bloody day long. I think there's a lyricism to it. I just enjoy hearing that accent. And not Especially when it's swearing? Well, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> but um, yeah, Double Boost. Again, he's a warts and all kind of like creator. Um, you know... He's he's involved in like steam rallies, machining. He's got his own little machine shop at home, um, at home, and that's what his channel is about: machining, lathe work, milling machines, doing little repairs for people. Um, I think his I think he he works in a, an engineering background, and I don't know whether he's semi-retired now or what. He does refer to work, so I'm sure he works as well. But then he puts this, you know, great Sunday night nightcap film out every week on a Sunday, and it'll cover a repair he's done for a steam engine, or some machining he's done for this. He makes a, um, oh, what do you call it? Like a, oh, bollock. What, oh, how does it work? Oh, God. Oh, it's like a... Double boost, man. Double boost. Uh, he makes a... Uh, twasted engineering. Is twat, that it? Yeah, twat bastard. <laughs> He's got a lot of content. Yeah. <laughs> oh, fuck's sake. <laughs> it's just not going to... You do sound effect noises. Yeah, it's just not going to be worth it when I finally get there. I'll be like, oh, it's an adapter. Ah, oh, bugger it, it's not on there. Fuck. You're going to have uh, to choose another project that you like. Oh, Jesus Christ. Um, some of the stuff he does is he's recently done a visit to Cragside. Um, you know, the Armstrong um, Armstrong's house, the big uh, um, house up in the north. He's the first electric house. You know, it had electric back in like 1900. Right. Cragside. So he had a generator on side. He was an inventor, Armstrong College, munitions, all of that. They recently did a visit there and um, showed uh, the house. That was that was a really good. And he does stuff like that. He'll go to a steam rally. And what and did he do on that then? Well, he, he'll just take his camera in there and show you around, you know. But okay. I've never been to Cragside. My parents have, and they said it was amazing. So it gives you that little insight and... Um, but you know the stuff he does. He's, there's another one where he goes to a steam rally, and there, um, you know, uh, little things like that. So he's taking you to events, but also it's from the machining perspective. A really, really talented machinist, and you know, yeah, fantastic. Get watching, and also just the accent. And he's not afraid to call himself, um, you know, when he when he makes a mistake, and he does make mistakes, and he drops things, and there's a little, um, yeah, there's a foray into blue language, and it really does quite, uh, is quite enjoyable. So yeah, get get watching, get subscribing. Let us know what you think. I mean, that's that's something from these videos. You know, please leave comments because we'd like to know what you think to these people that we're kind of like, you know, putting forward. You know, are they are they all we make them out to be, or you know what? 
<laughs> what? Well, I don't know. Just what? what? Just what? <laughs> All right. So that is our first episode of this new format. Dirty in Shed. Our... Dirty Shed Creations playback. Is that does that work? Dirty Shed Creations YouTube creators review of the day. <laughs> oh, that's a mouthful, isn't it? We need. We'll put some work into it. We'll figure out. Yeah, what we'll we're figure out it. some sort. But this of... is episode one. Yeah. Let us know what you thought of it, whether you like it, and if you do have any makers that you like or want to promote, or you've seen a really cool film that you're like, hey, someone needs to see this, yeah. then send it to us and we'll promote it for you and uh, yeah. give you a shout out. And uh, yeah, until the next time. Ciao for now. Ciao for now. Goodness Look at the camera. Me. Look at the camera. It's so 80s. Look at the camera. Over there. What's that? No. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. Bye. Bye. See you. Catch you on the flip side, Holmes.